Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house this morning. Welcome to those who are watching on Facebook this morning. Uh, you can also see it uh, on YouTube on my channel, uh, Pastor Ray Nearson. The bulletin for the day will be uh, that will, can be found there on the um, on the web uh, page. Also, of course, it'll be on the screens and in your uh, handout. Uh, this week is uh, the week we take up pledges for uh, 2022, and we do that a little differently than we take the offering normally. Normally, of course, the ushers come out and collect the offering from you, but because this is our offering to God, our pledge to God, I'd ask that one member of every family would come up here and you see that white box there on the altar with a cross on it, and you come up there and you lay your green, your uh, attendance sheet, your offering for the day, if you brought one, and your pledge, if you have that. Just lay that in that box during the time of the offering and then return to your seats. Um, so that, that's a little different this morning. Also this morning we're going to receive two members um, uh, uh, by affirmation of faith, uh, Phyllis Thomas and Ed Smith, so we welcome them. But before all of that, we have a string coalition playing for us first, Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way onto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. O oh, beautiful star, beautiful star of Bethlehem. Shine upon us until the glory dawns. Give us a lamp to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of light, guiding the pilgrims through the night over the mountain till the break of dawn. And into the light of perfect day, it will give out a lovely ray. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawns. Oh, give us a lamp to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest, for the redeemed, the good and blessed, yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now the star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, beautiful, beautiful star, star of Bethlehem, Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Give us a lamp to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. What's...
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Advent is a time to prepare. Prepare the way of the Lord. Advent is a time to prepare our eyes to see the light of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Advent is a time to prepare our hearts to receive the word of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Advent is a time to prepare to show to share the joy of Christ. Advent is a time to embrace the promise of Christ. Prepare for Jesus, the light of the world. This morning we light three candles. The first candle reminds us that Advent is a time to wait. The second candle reminds us that Advent is a time to watch. And the third candle teaches us that Advent is a time to prepare. We prepare ourselves in heart soul, and mind to welcome Jesus, the light of the world.
mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you a renowned and praised people. I will make you renowned and praised among the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A new song to you, Jesus, we sing most every year, an anthem to your saving grace, we feel your presence here, oh Jesus, we await you. On this sad morn, in great anticipation, we await the day of Lord. You are the new song. whom we await release us from 
the way to sin and open up the gates. Oh, heaven now is open for all to enter in. You've come to us, meek and mild, to take away our sin. Jesus, you are coming to us each Christmas day. You're coming here to save us, to take our sin away. Oh, Jesus, we await you on this day. We await the day you are born. Our hope is in you, Jesus. You're in our hearts to stay. With God the Father and the Spirit, you take our sin away. Oh, Jesus, we await you on this Advent morn in great anticipation. We await the day you were born, we await the day you are born. We stand in reverence for the gospel. The Holy Gospel for the third Sunday in Advent from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. The children are invited to come down in front now for the children's message. If you know what they mean. First one is the word joy. What's joy mean? Anybody? Charlie? Really, really happy. Okay, that's a good. That's, well, that's really good. Anything else? Anybody else want to add a few more words? Smiling all over, just kind of bubbling up from the inside. And your joy is just kind of oozes out of you, doesn't it? It just, you just, you can't keep it in. Okay? How about um, this word? Let me get my papers right here. Oige. What's the word oige? Nothing. Very good, Charlie. It's a word I made up. Oige. Does that sound like a good word, though? Does that sound like something you want to be, Oige? Joy sounds better, right? Than Oige. But you know, a lot of people live Oige life. I, if you take the words joy and put them backwards, you get Oige. You. Others and then Jesus. And a lot of people live their lives that way. They put themselves first. And you might think that they should boast. And then they say, well, other people that I know, they're important. And then, oh, I guess Jesus is important too. And he comes in third. And people who live this way live an oige life, I say. Because none of these are bad. Jesus, the order is wrong. The order is backward. How about joy? What's the difference here? Jesus, others, you. Jesus, others, you. So who comes first? Jesus. Jesus comes first. And where do you come? Last. Well, last. Um, third, I would might say. Um, but yeah, the, of the three, it's last. And where do others go? In the middle. Still in the middle. Okay? Now, when you have joy, you know about Jesus, and you put Jesus first, and then you have others and what they need, and then finally you take care of yourself. This is called joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Now, that word rejoice is related to the word joy. Rejoice means to have joy or, or, or live a joyful life. And to have joy, he says, you have to do it in the Lord. That's Jesus. Always. And then I say, rejoice. You put Jesus first. Then you'll have joy. Over here, we lit today, uh, Barrett did, the pink candle. Now, we're getting closer to Christmas, so we have three candles lit, the two blue ones in the front, and the pink one. And the pink one is, stands for joy. Because we rejoice that we know that in just a couple of weeks, we get to celebrate Christmas. But we aren't celebrating because of ourselves, what we're going to get in our presence. 
we're not even really we're celebrating Christmas because of who we get to see, our grandparents or, or other members of our family or cousins or something you might not get to see all the time. We rejoice in Christmas because of Jesus' birthday. birthday. So if you're going to have joy this Christmas time, you're going to have to put Jesus first. Otherwise, you end up with oige. And nobody wants oige. We all want joy. You can go sit down. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text is drawn from the Gospel this morning, from the Gospel of uh, Luke, uh, chapter 7, particularly the words that uh, John, John the Baptizer, that is, sent to the Lord. Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? Someone pointed out, that the thing that makes humans different than the rest of the animal kingdom is that we're the only ones who seek meaning in life. All other animals, whether it be cats and dogs or bullfrogs, do not seek meaning in life. They don't try to figure out, well, why are we here? What are we here to do? What is the purpose of it all? Bullfrogs croak, and they just croak. They don't croak because they're trying to figure out what it means to be a frog. They are a frog. That's all they do. Cats bark. I mean, cats. (laughs) Dogs bark. (laughs) Cats, Cats purr. And they're not doing that as a way of figuring out who or what they are to exist. They don't do that. Only humans, men and women, children, try to figure out who we are and what we are to be. Young people are asked always by their parents and grandparents and others, what are you going to be when you grow up? What are you going to be? What what purpose are you going to have in life? Most of the time that question probably asked a little prematurely because they're not ready to make that decision. But the whole notion of trying to figure it out is not premature because we have to seek the meaning of our life. Why did God put us here? What is our purpose? Each one of us has a different purpose. 
all to be used for the common good. But each one of us is gifting different gifts, different talents, different strengths, different abilities, and different passions. Things we love to do. And we have to figure out which ones are, are ours, which ones are attainable, which ones are ones that will give us meaning in life. And one of these days, I'm going to figure that out for me. Because most people know that the reason why older people are asking younger people what they're going to be when they grow up is they're looking for ideas. for when they grow up. John had had some really good days. He really had. Now he probably had grown up without his parents, at least for a good share of his growing up years, because they were elderly when he was born. Probably had been raised more by his family, extended family, than his own parents, but Regardless, he'd been having some really good days back in chapter 3 of Luke, they're recorded. We're told that crowds were coming out there to see him. There he stood alongside the banks of the Jordan River, and people were fl flooding out there to see what he would say and what he was teaching and be baptized by him. He was a sensation. He was something that everybody wanted to be part of. And we're told that even the people who are marginal in society, like the tax collectors, the soldiers, and others, were coming to him, knowing that they needed to repent and to receive that baptism that he was granted. And then as a pinnacle, the top thing, here had come Jesus, down there to him to be baptized. And while John wanted to demur, he wanted to say, well, you know, I really should be baptized by you. Jesus had said, no, I want you to baptize me to fulfill all righteousness to fulfill all that needed to be done for the righteous people of God, I want to be baptized by you. And then he wound up in jail, John did. He wound up in jail because he had the courage to say to the king, technically a tetrarch, by the name of Herod, that he could not take his brother's wife for his own. That she was his brother's wife, not his wife. And he could not do that. She apparently was a willing participant in the whole thing. But John says, no, you can't do that. And for that statement, he winds up in Herod's jail. So he begins to wonder, what was I doing? Was, was I doing what I was supposed to be doing? Did I make a mistake somewhere? Did I... Did I even point out the right one that was to come? And that's kind of what we do when things go south. When things go against us. When everything's going great, we say, wow, we're doing, we're doing wonderful things. But when things are not going well, it's easy for us to say, what did I do wrong? Did I miss it? Did I do something that deserves this? What's going on here, Lord? I thought I, I, thought I knew. I, I thought I knew, John would say, the who the one was to come, the, the one that was the Messiah, the one he was to point out. 
I thought I had that right. Well, did I miss it? You know, every other prophet had pointed towards the Messiah at some point. But they hadn't been able to point him out and say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As John the Apostle records, John the Baptist saying, well, you have to keep the two Johns separate. But John the Baptist says to himself, I, did, what's wrong? I, did I do something wrong? And so he gathers up a couple of his disciples, the people who had been listening to him, one of whom, at least another one of whom, I should say, might very well have been the other John, if you look in John's Gospel. And he sends them to find Jesus. Now Jesus is up in Galilee. That's the Tetrarch Herod's territory. That's not neutral ground. That's not under direct Roman control like by Pilate. This is a part, this is a part that's under the same control as the one who threw him into jail. And he sends his messengers up there, and he says, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And I'm sure in his heart of hearts he wants to say, I know it's you, Jesus. But maybe I missed it. Maybe there's somebody else. Is there somebody else coming after you? Maybe... Maybe I just didn't get it right. And Jesus doesn't answer them right away. You have to read this subtly here, but you have to read this. We're told that when they got there, they asked the very same question, uh, the messengers do. And then it says, In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight then he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. Blessed is he who is not offended by me. Those messengers didn't get an immediate answer at least not a vocal one. The answer they got was to watch Jesus doing miracles. The answer they got first was that Jesus is fulfilling what Isaiah the prophet had said would come when the Messiah appeared. The signs of the Messiah's coming would be these sorts of things. The dead will hear, the lame will walk, the lepers will be cleansed, and the dead will be raised. So before he says a word to them, Jesus shows them that what had been prom prophesied before by another prophet was coming true. So that John, when they would return, would not just be depending on Jesus' word, but on Jesus' acts. What Jesus was doing. And then comes a very subtle but true rebuke. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Blessed is the one who doesn't fall down. That's what the word offended means in Greek. The one who doesn't fall down because of me. Who doesn't trip over me. Who doesn't see me as something that it's in the way and you, 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 you get caught up and you, uh, down you go. Now, all of us who have fallen know how quickly that happens. One minute you're up, next second you're down. Doesn't take very long. Stub your toe or hit your leg and bang, down you go. And he says, blessed is the one who doesn't have that happen to them, John. 
Because, John, I think you need to hear again, you were right. You were right when what you had said before, but now in your time of struggle, when you're no longer that important, you're not a sensation. In fact, you are awaiting the judgment of the king. Understand that you don't have to trip over me. You don't have to fall because of me. Because I am the one you were pointing to. I am the one for which you were sent as the forerunner, as the announcer, as the prophet to announce that he was present, the one who was coming to save his people. The writing from Zephaniah, not a part of the scripture most of us reach, reads much of the time, talks about restoration, about the one who's going to restore Jerusalem and Zion, the one who's going to mend the problems of the world. It talks about the one and the only one who can do this thing. This up here is a piece of kintsugi. Kintsugi is a thing that they do in Japan. When they break a pot accidentally, you know, we've all done that, of course. doesn't take very long to for that to happen. They come along if it's and they use kintsugi to fix it. They make a paste out of a, of a glue, and then they mix in gold, gold dust. And they mix the gold dust in, and then they put the pieces back together. And that's what you get. You get a restored cup, it's us usable again, but it also becomes what? a work of art. It becomes something more valuable than it was probably valued when it was first made unbroken. And Zephaniah the prophet is saying, you know, you've been broken by life. You've had difficulties in your life. You're not always a sensation. Things don't always go your way. But God can restore you and make you more valuable than you were before. That's what he's trying to get across to John. John, okay, things aren't going grand. But understand, you did get a chance to announce who I was. And you now have heard that I am doing what was previously announced of the Messiah. So understand, John, that you have value. You may actually lose your head, but you'll still have value to me, Jesus is saying. Things may go really wrong, and we know that he did literally have his head removed from his shoulders. And yet, Jesus can say of him, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Nobody's greater than John. David's not greater than John. Moses is not greater than John. Noah's not greater than John. Isaiah the prophet is not greater than John. No one born of the woman is greater than John. That's a pretty high place. And then he says, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. You see, we're even greater than John. We're members of the kingdom of God. We weren't baptized with the baptism of repentance alone. But we were baptized by water and the Spirit and were made members of the kingdom of God. We were mem made members by Jesus' blood into his family. John is some sort of a cousin to Jesus by birth. Somehow or other, Mary and Elizabeth are related. 
we are brought in by adoption, but the thing about adoption is it's kind of different than birth in this regard. You're adopted because someone picked you. You're born into a family, you have nothing to do with it. Nothing. You're just born into it. You get good parents, you don't get good parents, you didn't have anything to do with that. But if you are adopted, someone looks out and says, I want you in my family. And I'm going to make you part of my family. And our worth, our identity, what gives us meaning is that we're part of the kingdom of God. That we have been chosen by God. It says in Romans chapter 6, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We are therefore buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So just like Jesus was raised from the dead, after three days after what appeared to the world to be the lowest part of his ministry, his execution, but when he rose from the dead and we're baptized as he was raised, we are raised, we then get our purpose, our meaning in life, that is to walk in the newness of life. John doesn't get to see that. His life is terminated earlier, at least not on this side. Of eternity. No, no doubt John, like all the believers in heaven, know about the salvation that came through Jesus. But we, who are on still on this side of eternity, who are still waiting for the Lord's return, have a meaning in life. We're not to purr like the dogs and bark like the cats. <laughs> we are to walk with Jesus. We are to walk in the newness of life. John was wondering what, what was ahead. And Jesus gives him assurance. We may be wondering this week, what's ahead? You know what? Jesus gives you assurance as well. Because you are greater than even John in the kingdom of heaven. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We speak the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As I stated before the uh, service, at this time, while uh, Kathy's playing some music, if you will come up, the ushers will assist you with this, if you will come up, starting here in the front and working to the back, and place your offering, your uh, attendance sheet, and your pledge 
into this white box that's up here on the altar.
congregation may be seated. Would uh, Ed and Phyllis, Ed Smith and uh, Phyllis Thomas are joining our congregation uh, this morning. Dear friends in Christ, the members of our congregation are happy that you are to become part of our Christian fellowship. Our Lord Jesus Christ bids us to confess him before men with the promise that he will then confess us before his Father in heaven. That we may rejoice in your confession, I now ask you in the presence of God in this congregation, do you accept and confess the teachings of the Lutheran Church as you've learned to know them as being faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. As a member of this church, do you intend to continue in the confession of this church, attend public worship, make diligent use of the means of grace, and lead a righteous and godly life? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. And will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers, your time, your treasures, and talents? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. Upon this year promise, I, in the name of this congregation, extend to you the right hand of fellowship and love, acknowledging you as a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, inviting you to continue to receive the Lord's Supper and to participate in all the blessings of salvation which God has given to his church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may return to stand for prayer. In our prayers today, we remember, of course, the, the ongoing needs that are always in your prayer sheet every Sunday, uh, the people of our congregation and people who are known to us who are in need of the Lord's help. Uh, we also remember Ronnie and Peggy Shelton, uh, who this week are celebrating their 67th wedding anniversary. Uh, and we also remember the people uh, in Kentucky and Illinois and other states who suffered uh, terrible damage because of the tornadoes of last weekend. Please pray. Almighty God, we have so many reasons to rejoice while we make our Advent and Christmas preparations. As you called John the baptizer to prepare the way for your son's ministry, so enable us to be your gospel messengers through our various callings, in our homes, in our communities, and in our work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we give thanks that you build your church among us through the proclamation of your word and sacraments. Keep us focused on the joy of your presence for our deliverance from sin and death that came through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh God, by your spirit you bless guide and empower the ministry of your church. We pray you to move all those whom you have gathered here at peace to give generously of their time, treasure, and talent so that the work of your church in this place may move forward. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Oh God, we pray for our leaders, our nation, especially our president, the Congress, and judges, as well as all state and local officials who serve to make and administer our laws. Give to those who hold public office prudent wisdom as they deal with the wide range of issues that confront our nation and our people so that their efforts may contribute to the general welfare of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, when disasters take place, we see the fragility of human life in our fallen world. As people in many parts of our nation have experienced 
destructive tornadoes, be near with your presence to sustain and encourage. Raise up gifted and generous people to respond with loving assistance, empowering the work of restoration, repair, and rebuilding. And use your people to bring the help and hope of Jesus Christ to those who are hurting and in need. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the many years of marriage you have given to Ronnie and Peggy. For all your mercies, we give you grace, thanks, and praise, confidence that your blessing will abide with them and their family for all the days yet to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, your Son became flesh and healed the sick of all kinds of diseases and afflictions, demonstrating his power and giving us a foretaste of the restoration to come at the last day. We pray that you would have mercy on all those who are enduring physical affliction, those known to us in our congregation, those of our friends and family, those whose names are listed before us during this week's prayer page. We commend them to you, O Lord, asking you to be near with your sustaining power to everyone who is in need. Send your grace and healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those, those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, and the, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you
You may be seated. Good morning. Glad to have you. Glad to have our guests and visitors, particularly glad to have Ed and Phyllis join our congregation this morning. We're glad that you are with us. In, in uh, They've been worshiping with us for some time, but have now officially uh, joined our congregation. I want to thank Pastor Bergman again for assisting with the service this morning and for String Coalition, who uh, 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 beautifies our service about once a month. And it's led by Deborah over here, but uh, I got a couple of announcements before we get to her. Um, uh, next Sunday, we are going to have church at 9 o'clock, followed by Bible class, but at 11 o'clock will be the children's Sunday school program. So that will be next Sunday, the 19th. Christmas Eve service is at 6.30, uh, and that will be the candlelight uh, service. And then on Christmas Day, that's actually a Saturday this year, uh, we'll have service on, at 10 o'clock in the morning with Holy Communion. And then just as the way things work out, the next day uh, is Sunday. So we'll have church again on Sunday morning for my favorite minor uh, holiday of the year, St. Stephen's Day, <laughs> the 26th of December. Uh, you'll note that there are a couple of uh, special parties this week. The Elder Mel having their Christmas party on Tuesday. Uh, the Joy Party, I think Deborah's going to talk about that, is on Thursday. And on Saturday at 2 o'clock is a special uh, celebration for um, Christine Lundenberg. Christine is turning 100 this week, 100 years old. God has blessed her. Um, and so we're going to have a reception for her here, her family it will be here. But also you are all invited to, to come and celebrate that God has given her a full century of life. So that will be on uh, uh, Saturday afternoon from 2 until 4. Deborah? So yes, as Pastor talked about, we are having our Christmas party. Uh, it's a Christmas bunco party for the Joy Group. So if you are 55 or older, or if this week you identify as being 55 or older, you are welcome to attend. You will have toy soldiers and candy canes to greet you and, and send you in. It'll be held at our house, Marshall and Debbie's house, uh, at on Wortham Bend. It's in the bulletin. Also, um, Women of Peace will not meet this month. We will meet again in January. Thank you. But Men of Peace will meet. On, on the 19th in the afternoon at 5 o'clock uh, at uh, Kelsey's uh, uh, farm. Are there any other announcements? The Lord be with you. 